Hi everyone, I'm Anna Spargo-Ryan. Thank you to Reed Tasmania for having me tonight. I wish I had a nice bookcase scenario happening behind me, but to be honest, um, my house is just various different kinds of mess. So um, my dogs are probably gonna walk back and forth while I'm reading. Um, and I am going to be reading from my book, The Golf. Um, which came out from Picador in 2017, which feels like trillions of years ago. Um, and it's a story about being a sister um, and about how, how we protect each other um, and about being far from home and also being a teenager and all of those things at once, which is a lot, let's be honest. So I'm going to read to you from chapter one. These chapters all have a little tortoise at the top. Um, and if you've read the whole book, you'll know the significance of that. Uh, and if you haven't read the book, you will need to read it to find out. All right, chapter one. <clears throat> My mother had morphed into all kinds of versions of herself. She'd been a cowboy boot wearer and a biker chick and a liberal voter. She'd been a person who went to raves in the bush and a person who watched horror movies and a person who had to sleep with the fan on. They'd come and go and she'd snap back to the woman who watched cooking shows and took spiders outside. And then there was Jason. A week after they met in the BW checkout line, mum asked him home for dinner. She had her hair swept to the side and she made tuna mornay in little white pots. When the buzzer rang, she pulled us by our wrists into the corridor. You kids be good, promise? We're always good, Ben said. Her lips curled up. She opened the door. Jason, they kissed on the mouth. Jace. He looked around her and into the hall. Who are they? Mum gathered us together. This little guy is Ben. Ben put out his hand and Jason stared at it. And the big one is Sky. It was good looking in a balding, tattooed way, which had always been Mum's type. Didn't know you had kids. You'll like them, she said. He gave her a bunch of flowers with a barcode on the side, just shoved them right into her hand. Right then, what's for dinner? Mum had the table laid out with placements I'd never seen before. Cutlery from the picnic set she got with her flybys points that had handles made to look like ivory. She led him down the corridor by the hand with her feet floating above the ground. We sat around the table, all of us looking at each other at once. Hope you like tuna, she said. Yeah, he said. Got a mate with a boat. Go out fishing for those bastards sometimes. He clinked his fork against the white bowl. Never had it this fancy, though. He ate quietly, contemplating each mouthful. The Mornay was lumpy. I pushed the balls of flour against the roof of my mouth and let them sit there in a film. Where do you live, Ben said. Jason eyed him up and down at the dinner table in his Iron Man pyjamas. North. Where's that? North of here. Everywhere's north of here, I said. He looked at me. Port Flinders, mostly. Never heard of it. Yeah, well, why would you? No posh folk like you there. Mum put her hand on his arm. Port Flinders, she said. How exotic. Wouldn't call it that, he said, and chewed his tuna with his eyes closed. After dinner, Mum brought out a Viennetta and told Ben to cut off a slice as big as he wanted. We ate it from plastic bowls in front of the TV. A blonde woman shouted about landscaping and pies with berries in them. Such good reception, Jason said. Mum had pushed him into the three-seater and he ate around her head, which moved up and down on his belly as he breathed. Next door's TV was right on the other side of the wall. They were watching a movie. We could hear it every time Better Homes went to an ad break. Might get a blanket, Mum said. We sat in the room with Jason and he didn't look away from the TV once. Mum came back with the blanket, tossed it over both of them and her whole body disappeared under it. Jason stared ahead. Are you going home soon, Jason? Ben said. Mum looked up at him and the blanket moved. Dunno, he said. I'm going to my room. I took the bowls to the kitchen and watched the people from the window. From there you could see right across to the Westfield, all the families late night shopping in their Corollas or their Astras, buying burgers in the food court and sitting together and probably laughing. They came through the doors with their arms swinging, heavy with bags, gifts maybe. I left the bowls to dry on the counter. My room was stale and I opened the window to let the air in. Season end crickets were doing their tango in the car park downstairs. Mr. and Mrs. Adelman from number six shouting because he cheated again, or she had, the screeching of the train coming to a stop in the tunnel. A man had died in there last week. On the news, they said, no suspicious circumstances, but Kiralee from school had seen it with her own eyes, 
The man laid out on the tracks with his legs sliced off and blood shooting out everywhere. It was pretty bad, she'd said. I bet, I'd said, which didn't seem like the right thing to say, but I couldn't think of anything else. On my bed, I had a copy of Macbeth, secondhand, bruised and beat up at the edges, someone else's notes inside, cheap version. I read the lines again and again, trying to make myself understand all that mulched up language. We were supposed to read from it in English on Monday, me as Lady Macbeth and some other kids reading the other parts. Not like a play, just to get the words right. And so our teacher didn't have to do any actual teaching. Too busy having his fling with our homeroom teacher, everyone said. Mum appeared at the door with her hands together. She had a faraway look, glassy. I read about the bloody dagger, tried to decipher someone else's handwriting in the margin. Mum coughed. Yes, I said. What do you think of him? I guess Lady Macbeth is the real brains of the operation. What? I mean, Jason. Oh, I haven't thought of him. Can't believe I met him in Big W. I mean, of all places. Just so romantic to bump into each other in the line. He let me go ahead of him, you know. Real gentleman. I heard his voice from the kitchen, a mess of low growls. Mum sat on my bed. He runs his own business. How good is that? In Port Flinders. Oh, yeah. What does he do? Something in trading, import-export stuff. Too complicated for us to understand, I bet. She touched her fingers to her face. Ha, <laughs> like I just did. I'm glad you like him. I've got homework. Oh, sure, of course. She lingered in the doorway, watching me. His voice came from down the hallway. Linda, oi, how do you get the lid off this thing? Mum winked. Better get to bed, she said. The walls between my bedroom and hers were paper thin. I listened to them into the night, the rhythmic thud against the door. At least wait till I'm asleep, I shouted, and the noise stopped. Three days later, Mum gave Jason keys to the apartment. He needs them, you know. He's got to come and go when you run your own business. I moved my homework to the kitchen table, watched him make phone calls from the couch, then sat next to me and drove his cars along the bench. This one's an HQ Monaro, he said, and this one's a Ford Escort. Look, they went drag racing along the kitchen sink. The Escort wins at short distances, but the HQ can go for longer. Peter Brock had one just like it. Oh, right, I said. Jason whispered into his phone. Mum buzzed around him, sweeping and straightening. She bought a vacuum cleaner from Kmart and pushed that around him too, picking up dust that hadn't had time to accumulate yet. Linda, he said, can you fucking not? And pointed at his ear. I'll put it on eBay, she said, and sat next to him on the couch with her hand on his knee. We stayed like that into the afternoon, Mum watching Jason do his business deals, Ben driving his cars around the kitchen, me wondering if Lady Macbeth would get the blood off her hands. Later, I walked Ben to the fish and chip shop. Gin wiped his, wiped his hands on his apron. What can I get you two? Minimum chips was $3 and mum had given us a bit extra to get some calamari rings. We took the paper packet to the bridge over the river and sat with our legs between the bars. What's on at school tomorrow, I said. Spelling. He pulled the thin tendons of calamari from the batter. Yanis is going to show me how to make a bomb out of a sparkler. Sounds dangerous. Sounds cool, you mean. Give me some of that calamari. He ate two pieces, barely chewing. People walked around us on their way home from work, from university. We put our heads close together and tried to guess where they were going. A tall woman in leopard print heels to meet her boyfriend at the bar. A grandmother with three my bags to take to her grandson's birthday. A young guy on a skateboard on his way to jump the balustrade at Westfield. I crumpled the oily paper and we took it home with us. Keep Australia beautiful, I said. The apartment block car park was lit in a couple of corners by the two light posts still standing and the apartments on the lower story were cloaked in the night. Upstairs, some of the windows glowed yellow. At the twi All the twilight sounds came up from the road and lodged in the U-shaped building as though it were a baseball glove. The door at number six flew open and a shoe came hurtling out. Why is Mrs Adelman always so angry, Ben said. She wakes me up. Let's put the rubbish in the downstairs bin. Mum had her legs around Jason. She looked up at us as we came in but didn't move. Where's my change, she said. You told us we could get calamari rings, said Ben. Like hell I did. Jason laughed. Don't suppose you got any for us. Ben looked to me. No, he said. I tipped $2 from my pencil case and shoved it into Mum's hand. Get yourself something nice, I said. Jason laughed again and she slapped his arm. Don't encourage her, she said. Got enough kids in this house without you acting like one too. She climbed off his lap. His phone rang. I went out on the concrete balcony and watched the traffic go by. Over the road, the new factories were going in, but on Sunday mornings, they downed tools, and if you strained, you could hear the river beating against the rocks. I took Ben lizard hunting with Amir from the apartment next door. We went down to the river where it went under the main road and into the park. Newts, they said, sometimes, when the rain had been really heavy. Amir's parents had come to Australia when he was a baby from Pakistan. 
Don't think they've got many lizards in Pakistan, Ben said. Can't remember, said Amir. Pretty good food, though, I think. Ben nodded solemnly. They're teaching us about asylum seekers at school now. Mrs Morris says they're locked up on some island. He turned to Amir. Did you get locked up on an island? Nah, he said, and picked up a bit of broken cement. My dad's a bricklayer. Oh, yeah. They ran up along the edges of the canal, stopped to look at bits of graffiti with swear words in them, started shouting them at each other. Hey, Ben, fucking knob jockey, fucking douche. And Ben, Amir, you're a bloody shit rag. People stopped on the bridge to look at them. My brother in his Guardians of the Galaxy t-shirt and Amir with his sandals slapping against the concrete. Slow down. My voice bounced around the aqueduct. We reached the tunnel that would take us underground and through the park. Amir stopped. What if the rain starts again? Ben farted, laughed. What do you mean? Kids drown in these tunnels when it rains, you know. It rushes through and they get swept away. No, they don't. It's true. The day was dry and warm. There's no rain coming, I said. Ben ran into the tunnel. The good lizards are this way, Amir. The younger boy stood at the entrance a good while longer, peering into the blackness of the tunnel. So dark, he said. That's only because it goes around the corner, I said. It's like 15 metres and then you get to the bend and when you go round it, you're practically out. He shifted from foot to foot. I can hold your hand if you like. The movement stopped. Ben, he called. Silence. Amir's hand slipped into mine and we walked together, his tiny legs going twice as fast as mine and his palms sweaty. At the park, a few people gathered around a barbecue which hissed and spat into the midday air. A kid on a bike, the same kid falling off the bike, trailed by a mother with a band-aid, a girl on a swing, a boy on a swing, an adult on a swing. I sat at the edge of the canal and watched the way they were with each other, touching and laughing. Mum didn't come with us to the park very often. Not at all, really. She said families depressed her, which was probably true. Lots of things upset her, especially people being happy in public where she could see them. She never looked into the Westfield car park from the kitchen window. A man watched the boys as they made their way along the creek bed. Ben's skin had flushed red in the sun in excitement. He laughed loudly and it ricocheted. Another boy joined them and another. The four of them picked over the rocks together, shouting at each sign of a webbed foot or a scaly tail. Still the man watched. The littlest boy slipped where moss had grown against the concrete. He cried. Ben bent down to him, picked it, pulled him up by his hands. Are you okay, he said. The man was standing then. Oliver, get back over here. The boy limped towards him. Ben came to sit next to me, pulled his cap down over his eyes. I wrapped my arm around his shoulders the way I always did. He rarely pushed it off. Do you like Jason, he said. His legs were so close to mine. I wondered if his sweat would fuse our skin together. I don't know, I said. Do you? I guess. I think mum likes him. Yeah, she busted me at the fridge in the middle of the night and she didn't even yell. Wow. He looked at me. Was he still there when you got up this morning? I don't think so. He turned over a heavy rock. Got one. Amir, look. A gecko, skin so so soft it was transparent. He held it in his open palm and we laughed at the dropped tail as it danced on its own, watched its organs throbbing inside its bones. That is chapter one of The Gulf which you can still buy in some places. Booktopia definitely has it. Reading sometimes has it. It's old now, so it can be harder to find. But if you would like to read it, I would be very, very grateful. Um, I hope you're all keeping well in this strange time um, and that you have enjoyed listening to this tonight. Once you've listened to this, go back and listen to all of the other ones and then also listen to all the future ones. It was a pleasure. Thanks. Bye.